and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino, welcoming you to an episode dedicated to those moderately lazy. For it has been them who have all too often driven human progress if their reluctance to effort is also properly paired with true ingenuity and enthusiastic brilliancy for the object of their attention. And here on virtuallyfun.com you are presented exactly the opportunity for a little bit of enjoyable laziness as there is an absolutely awesome article on Dell Unix on 86box. 86box of course referring to the IBM PC system emulator 86box on 86box.net available for major operating systems and being well known for accurate emulation. And here virtually fun is not only offering an absolutely great article, very atmospheric and allowing your fancy to plunge into what it might have been like to use that system at the beginning of the 1990s. Nay, even more, they are delivering you a complete 86 box image with a pre-installed system on a 500 megabyte drive, a virtual fashion ready to boot in 86 box. Well, that's a little bit of theory. I did get the archive on I unarchived it and I tried booting it and I couldn't. For the original configuration file that came prepackaged with it, just wouldn't work with my versions of 86 box on Ubuntu 2204. So this is what the original configuration file looks like. That is therefore the file that does not work for me. But briefly, I shall also let you have a look at my file, should you make a similar experience. The adjustments are not many, you just need to maybe change something in the beginning, as well as something in the end. I deactivated the whole networking thing. And with that configuration file, we actually have a good chance of running Dell Unix as is in 1000. 24 times 786 graphical pixels once we start the x11 environment without doing anything. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is also a sort of introduction or prolegomenon to what is to come on this channel. For I am presently a bit on a sort of operating systems trip. And I am going to literally hail you with, eh, let me reset this, no, yes, do reset actually. I'm going to hail you with OS experiments, seem to not get into the BIOS of this thing, this, this is annoying me, reset. I want into the BIOS. Delete, 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 delete. Yes. Finally. One thing you need to do before you can boot this image. Because in the archive itself, the BIOS settings are not included. You need to do that yourself. So when you start it the first time, press delete until you arrive here at the BIOS. And here in standard CMOS setup, it is important that you pay attention the drive C has 1015 cylinders, 16 heads and 63 sectors. That might be preset, might not be though. So pay attention that it is and then you will be able to boot this. Anyway, where was I? I was telling you that I am about to show you a lot of systems. And there will be some absolute installation orgies in the future. I don't know who of you really is into that. I totally am and I am doing that also a little bit as mental notes supporting any future installation attempts by myself. And I hope that they will be useful to others who might wish to 
do a little bit of operating systems archaeology. But here we shall be, well, essentially trying out something pre-installed. It's pre-installed very nicely. It looks cute, offers possibilities, contains even a C compiler and should offer you just plain and simple immediate usage of the system. You see it booting here and soon, yeah, the system is coming up, please wait. We can try it out a little bit. So that does take its time. Indeed, the network is unreachable. What is noteworthy is that many varieties of System 5 are quite slow to boot and slow to shut down, whereas the operation during use of the system is snappy, as you see here. Now, you have mail. Ah, that's gonna be fun. Once you type, type mail to see what mail do you have, boy are there a lot of messages about all sorts of system components that have been pre-installed. And <laughs> if you want to not only have a swift look at it, but get into the detail, you just might wish to check your mails not going to read them now I just wanted to show you that you have mail in this case is something relevant and nice I'm also very grateful of course we are all most impatient to see what happens when we type start X and what happens is exactly what you think might happen we do get into X11 So let me just put this a little bit better into view. Most monitors nowadays are having a larger vertical resolution than 768 pixels, the 1024 not to talk of. So this full screen system should be normally nicely visible and nicely usable for you without much ado. If you just have a, at least higher, like at least equal or higher resolution, which you very, very likely have. So that is what it looks like. Yeah, mail would be the same here too. You know, mail. So again, we are seeing here, ah, these nice emails about this and that that we didn't read. Some things are here as you would expect them, such as top. And one might immediately notice something funny. The interrupt character in System 5 Unix is delete, not control C. So I now press delete and I quit top. If you end up using System 5 and control C doesn't work, then not top C, just top, then try delete in order to get out of your programs. I actually wonder, does this one allow delete or not? Uh, control C or not? Yes, it does, ladies and gentlemen. So this one is apparently a very nice Unix that has been adjusted to permit both. And if you want to know a little bit more about the key conventions. I also want to show you this very interesting article on Y Combinator where there is a detailed explanation given as to why there were special characters of one nature used in early Unix and of a different nature used in later Unix. And it apparently all boils down to the idea that when DEC started to drive Unix adoption, they also changed the characters hash and add sign into other conventions so as to not bug that much text processing. 
this is certainly an interesting read and you might wish to visit it and have a look. But if you ever tried out a version 6 Unix emulator or something like that and you were wondering, hey, wait a minute, what is this delete K as a hash sign? Yeah, here you're having an explanation with the roots in CTSS and whatnot. So, this also leaves some traces in our emulator that in that it allows both control C and uh, delete for interrupting a program. The other experiments with it, such as trying this frame maker or what was it? <laughs> I might leave to you more in depth, but yeah, let's try this thing. Let's say I I shall do yeah, what is it called? And now now I'm getting a little bit upset. User frame bin demo maker. Okay, let's try that. User bin user frame bin demo maker. Yeah, there's nothing. LS huh. what's happening here? LS user bin frame no, what, what what was it called? It's just too late by now. User frame bin, not user bin frame. Okay, uh, CD user frame bin. What's it looking now? Like this, and here's our demo maker, indeed. Whoa, we are about to witness frame maker whatever frame maker is okay yes of course do open it finished loading oh so so here we see how to make nice documents you see, ladies and gentlemen, I will never get that far in any other experiment <laughs> because my interests are different. But I have to admit with full respect and admiration that this seems to be a very nicely equipped Unix system. Okay, now let's get out of here. This is beautiful have to say this is beautiful you know when I am in X11 the only thing I am commonly using is Xedit right <laughs> it, it is in fact a nice text editor and I can say hello from Xedit to you but of course this has nothing to compare interesting is also this is not TWM one of the more usual window managers. Instead, this is MWM. So Alt Space is giving you a menu that I just opened where you can say close, for instance, or Alt Q for quitting, or how is this working? Alt Space, close, Alt F4, yeah, okay. And anyway, you can control things that way too. Okay, I'm still curious though. Maybe I should have checked more carefully what does Virtually Fun now offer given that Frame Maker looked really, really cool. Oh well. I think, ladies and gentlemen, External circumstances are now quite suddenly forcing me to end today's adventure. The only thing I shall finally show you is how to get out of X if your mouse is not working. Like mine would be working now. I could left click and then move the mouse in order to, to quit and whatnot. But the ugly way to get out is to say PS elf. 
and to see what here is your X server. And your X server is this X mach thing. So you're then saying kill 247. This is the uncivilized way. Like one shouldn't be doing things that way. And okay, I completely crashed the system. But trust me, dude, in the real world, this has a tendency of working at least a little bit better. <laughs> Chaos, ladies and gentlemen. Get used to chaos in the future, where I shall greet you again to further adventures, hopefully ending better. Until then, I wish you to have a wonderful time. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider joining our friendly club. See you hopefully soon. And from me, thank you for watching and goodbye.